and it was con- my parents were concerned okay what are you going to do like is this something that you can do uh, i really planned that i would be going through my sprints every day but uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was just a plan on paper at the end of it. That negotiating sprint is gonna help me negotiate with my parents because I suck at it. I absolutely suck at it. I'm gonna take all these learnings and I'm gonna apply with my parents. Uh, hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another Stoa Weekly Roundup. Um, this week I have three fellows from C10 with me. But before we get to them, uh, I'm Sheldon, I lead community at Stoa. And uh, today I have Archil, Palash and Leslin with me from Cohort 10. They are currently, what, I would say two and a half months into uh, into your Stoa journey, right? I would say at this point. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think we'll just do a quick round of intros. So, you know, starting off with uh, Palash, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure. Hi. So I'm part of the C10 with Stoa and uh, I've been part of governance and political consulting space for about three years. And uh, I decided to take a career break about four months back. And that's when Stoa happened. And currently I'm looking to shift into business and management consulting. And uh, yeah, Stoa is something that's trying to help me focus on that. And apart from that, I have a lot of hobbies. I like to play sports. I like to go for movies. I like to go for parties. So that's about me. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thanks, Parash. Uh, Anchal, what about you? Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm a part of uh, C10 as well. And uh, I'm a microbiology graduate. I graduated last year and uh, I got into the alcohol industry. And uh, I'm, I took up brewing as something uh, that I wanted to pursue. So I make beers and uh, I'm also um, learning more about wine so that I can host wine tasting sessions. So I'm dwelling in that space as well. And I joined Stoa because I wanted to learn the basics of running a business. I want to have, I aspire to have my own brewery one day and uh, a small consultancies with wines and other beverages. So yeah, that's how I'm in Stoa. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Rachel. I have a question for you. I'm going to come back to you. Uh, Leslin, finally. Yeah, I'm Leslin. I am the next door writer. But before that, I'm the generic engineer guy. Um, I started, I finished my engineering and then I went on to pursue journalism. Uh, so you have science and commerce there. And then that did nothing good. So I uh, wanted to explore more. So to understand more about business, to understand more about soft skills. Uh, I took up store. I'm working full time since the last three years and work and the salary check can make you comfortable. So I wanted to push the bar. So, you know, uh, I have easily like four to six hours in my day to do something on my own. So I took up store just to explore more, to have a good level playing field of what's out there. So, yeah, that's what I'm here at Stoa 4, I'm the part of C10 and it's been nice, steady two and a half months. So looking forward to more experiences here, man. Yeah, uh, Something that's kind of, uh, you know, and Les- Lesson's being a bit like humble about it, but um, he's also an amazing writer, right? I think we've seen some of his work in Stoa Digest, but it's also reflected in, you know, some of the assignments and also submissions. Um, on the weekend as well and also induction right like I remember he completed one of the I remember you completed one of the tougher challenges um, at induction which was writing was it the haiku writing the yeah. haiku with, um, with out of all the alphabets alphabets right? yeah <laughs> and it's you were shocked it's an attempted before but yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was insane when uh, I saw that and I couldn't believe Sean did it in like, you know, just half an hour. I thought, uh, okay, we have we have a man who's good with words, um, you know, in this cohort. That's that's when I knew. Uh, Anshul, coming back to you, right? Like, how did you get into like microbrewing, right? Like, was it more, okay, TK, I like drinking in college and, okay, let me learn how to do this, uh, you know, save money on buying books and make my own beer for me and my friends. Was, was that how it came from? No, actually, I was being clueless through the entire college years and my 11th and 12th grade. That just helped me. That just persuaded me to experiment as much as I can with all the different uh, fields because 
I started off want to start off becoming a doctor didn't happen and then what then and I took up microbiology because I mm-hmm. thought that it's it's going to be an applied course and yes uh, mm-hmm. there was this thing in my head that I'll be studying uh, fermentation which is used for producing mm-hmm. alcohol so uh, towards the last semester I dived into the alcohol industry worked up as a content writer uh, for a company that hosted uh, events and competitions in US and UK and then thought that since i have pers- uh, pursued microbiology so let's let's get into the industry through the production line because that's mm. how it's going to be mm. more credible for me and uh, first day uh, on the brewing i was very nervous and i was scared that what if i don't end up liking this mm. as well because prior to that i had experimented with journalism with finance and everything else so mm-hmm. i loved it enjoyed it and since then i've never looked back and uh, then i also got to know about the wine community in india and i experienced uh, um mm-hmm. such an amazing community at different events and i decided to post to that as well so it was a lot of experimentations that led awesome. me there yeah also awesome. awesome. that that's very interesting um and you know what was the reaction of say you know like maybe your parents or your friends when you kind of hey i'm making this shift right i'm not going to become a doctor so uh it was it was it was con- my parents were concerned okay what are you going to do like is this something that you can do and why do you want to do mm. this so it's mm. i come from a brahmin family and uh, where no one drinks so everybody's like why do you want to do this <laughs> what are we going to tell people why are you doing this so um yeah. it took time and right now uh, my mother is planning to set up a bar at home she has oh. <laughs> yeah she's just taken this That's huge amazing. turn she's helping me experiment with uh, <laughs> making cocktails and making mulled wine so she's also wow. getting into it now wow, wow wow that's that's pretty awesome that's pretty awesome um i mean i mean i hope this is successful uh, you know then we can have sort of a wine tasting or even like a micro brewery party uh, at at store <laughs> possibly that's the future. plan you know uh, while i was <laughs> with them in the team one we used to yeah. oh, really? stuff, uh, that how uh, would i host the wine tasting sessions for people in store and we were planning oh. to once i'm done with my exam so i had an exam in january I'll get yeah. down and I'll make a list of the things that I need to do, and I'll come fly down to Bangalore, host the wine tasting events for Whoa. folks in store, and let's see then how it goes. Yeah, done, done, done. We're making this happen, right? No, I think that's something that I've seen with a lot of fellows, right? Like even um, last week, I was talking to Rishi, who you know had this again took a decision that was quite drastic in nature, um, and I think we see this with you know different folks uh, within. So I'm pretty sure there are similar stories. uh with many in c10 so coming on that right like polar something i like to ask you is like you came from you primarily did commerce right um which is again very theoretical um in nature and you know um, and how did you sort of how did the shift happen you know into become sort of a political analyst and you know how did that trajectory come about for you sure sure so like as you mentioned i'm i'm from hardcore business and commerce domain and uh, but i always on my side lines i was always part of social business plans and mm. i have always loved to interact with people on the mm. ground so that is what really intrigued me into governance mm. because when you genuinely go and talk to people you understand what problems they are facing and where is the communication lag between the governance part and what people actually want so that was something that really intrigued me but i didn't know how to make a career out of it mm. so thankfully just after my college i started with a business role job mm-hmm. uh, i uh, worked in the tax domain for about 7 months okay. couldn't really like that then uh, took a break that time okay. figured out talked to some new people who were already working in this domain of political and governance consulting mm-hmm. and yeah it was really nice so in that domain uh, i really felt that i was able to impact a lot of good lives mm-hmm. and uh, in my thinking i wanted to do in back in 2020 a very raw form of consulting mm-hmm. which throws me the cha- cha- uh, challenges even i am not aware of mm-hmm. so that really helped me to you know synchronize the thoughts of the common people probably yeah. sitting in a village of manipur probably sitting in a village of tamil nadu mm-hmm. or probably a metropolitan city like delhi mm-hmm. and trying to formulate a policy that they can be empowered to 
so that exposure really helped me to uh, interact with different masses of the country just understand how people think what are the factors that uh, you know make them decide that a particular minister or a policy is good or bad for them Mm. So that really intrigued me. Mm-hmm. So that went about for about three years. It was mm-hmm. really interesting. I was able to travel. I love to travel as well. Mm-hmm. That helped me to travel to different places, which I probably would have never had. Yeah. So that kept me going for about three years. Okay. Then originally, because I come from a business background, there was a thing when I actually completed three years into it. Mm-hmm. I felt that now is the right time to for pivot to for me to pivot into what I actually came from mm-hmm. and use the learnings that I have taken the most yeah. raw form of consulting, consulting that I have learned yeah. into the mainstream. And maybe okay. that, that's where I took a decision about five months back that mm. uh, right, right now is the time where I should be uh, making myself more aware how business consulting works. Mm. Join something like a store that it helps me, you know, let me allow us to get the best version out of myself out mm. there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's mostly about it. No, man, that, that, that's pretty interesting, man. Uh... I think kudos for kind of being able to push yourself, uh, you know, to that, right? Um, Leslin, I mean, you know, one of my favorite stories in like the Indian ecosystem is engineers not doing engineering after they're done with engineering. So, you know, could you talk about a bit about, you know, your current, I mean, you work at an interesting role in an interesting company. Um, you know, could you talk a little bit more about that and, you know, what does your day sort of look like? Sure. So I work at a startup based in Bangalore called Rande. Uh, I work as a digital storyteller. So part of my job is to cover uh, lives of people. So uh, 60% of the time I'm on ground. I'm into remote and rural places of India covering stories of people who don't have kind of the access that we have. So Rande provides the last mile financial access, right? For us, Getting loans is pretty easy. We get spammed to get loans. But oh, wow. for our farmers, shopkeepers, rural entrepreneurs, their ticket size are so low. Like mm-hmm. say 20, 30,000, they want to set up a business. Mm-hmm. Banks see them risky. Bank mm-hmm. don't want to lend to them. Mm-hmm. So Rangde kind of provides them access through people like you and me. Like we can lend say 100 rupees and fund mm-hmm. their loans. So when you fund their loans, it's an investment. You get your money back with certain interest, but also you make a social impact. Mm. So part of my job is to go and cover that social impact, how it okay. made a change in the lives of people whom you have invested in. So I interact with uh, plenty of rural farmers, artisans across different uh, parts of the country. And I bring their story out uh, on online forums, through blogs, videos, etc. So yeah, pretty interesting to cover people and you know kind of remove biases that we have about india Mm -hmm. and the population it's very stark there's a very stark urban and rural divide Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's yeah so it's difficult to see the other side and understand their problems yeah yeah i think i think most of us that exist especially like in bangalore like we we exist in this sort of startup ecosystem and you know sometimes i think about right like when we are looking i mean if you hang out on twitter or linkedin uh, you'll see someone posting something about see a certain app or a certain feature and you just think about like yeah you know this is just solving this tiny micro need of like you know this really small group of uh, you know people and you know it's not really something that has very significant impact so I'm, I'm guessing it must be quite you know fulfilling to an extent to work in a sector um, you know like like the one you are in and, you know with the organization that you're in. definitely I mean uh... Uh, still there's a scars for, you know, building uh, or, you know, kind of making technology accessible to the mm. rural population. Most mm. of us are, most of the bubble is building for and, you know, catering yeah. to the audience that there is. Yeah. But then th- there's this notion that does rural population has access to these technologies. Mm. Uh, now, as a startup ecosystem, we are transcending that border and catering yeah. more to rural entrepreneurs. So that's a very that's good true. thing. To say. That's true. Yeah. So, uh, you know, just, just to switch gears here a bit, right? Like I think uh, last week was, may have come as a relief to most of you, right? Because it was a break um, after the right? first break since uh, we kicked off the new year. So how did you, uh, how did you guys spend your break, right? 
Yeah, sure. So initially, uh, I really planned that I would be going through my sprints every day. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was just a plan on paper at the end of it. Uh, I had some uh, family events, some weddings. Yeah, so nice. mostly I was involved in that. I yeah. like playing sports. So I spent some time playing cricket, yeah. badminton. And by the end of it, I uh, went about all the previous assignments that I had done. Okay. So I think I had a whole sort of uh, one week. So. Good, good, good. So some some level of uh, you know store yeah. ecosystem productivity in that uh, break. That's that's nice. That's nice. just for my heart, but yeah. <laughs> uh, what what about you, Anjal? How was this, how was your break week? Um, so uh, my week was I, I like Palasha. I started off saying that I'll also get down to the previous prompts and revise what I had done. So I did do that on the okay. one and a half day. I did do that, I, <laughs> and then I sort of slagged. And then there was an entire brew day. So oh. uh, on the brew day, I have to be present in the breweries from uh, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. So okay. uh, after that, I just completely sacked off. One day I took off sleeping. And nice. uh, another, there was one another brew day. And we oh. made guava beer. We experimented oh. with the guava beer for Valentine's. And uh, yes. the, bra- uh, the batch took off pretty well. And we decided we'll uh, brew one more batch for the guava beer. Okay. And uh, yeah, uh, then there was uh, some events. I think this is me- uh, the bedding season. Yeah. So some yeah. events. Yeah. What about you, Leslie? Uh, the first day of the break, I came to Bangalore from Kochi. Uh, so it was Valentine's. So went to Tony, grabbed a bunch of wine bottles. Had a oh. good time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, Coming to Bangalore, there are plenty you much can do, right? So mm-hmm. I have uh, Gautam from our mm-hmm. team. Uh, yeah. He's going to prepare chicken biryani. So the, brain is, uh, the break is still continuing for me. <laughs> the break is still coming to an end. So yeah, that's how yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, if I could just uh, you know ask a question sort of of the last two and a half months, right? Like I think... Um, you know, right from induction, it's uh, I can imagine, right, for anyone who's working, especially knowing all three of you are working, uh, you know, so I bet like has disrupted your lives to some extent, right? Like whether it was reading the storms every day or spending those weekends and classes, um, you know, and even the team reshuffled recently, right? I remember, um, you know, a lot of people were just like, oh, oh, it's a new team. I just got used to my current team. Okay, and I got to figure out how to how to work with my my new team. Um, but you know, some something that I'd like to ask you guys, you know, what what's been um, what's been something that's sort of been a challenge, uh, you know, for you, right? Like, so personally, a challenge that you feel like you've been able to kind of overcome, um, you know, through the process uh, over the last two months, right? Like, what, what what was kind of like probably the hardest thing that you had to do? Uh, yeah, I mean, sorry, I didn't pick someone. So, uh, yeah, Leslie, why don't you go first? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, the hardest thing that I could get done, uh, you know, Stoa, it's given that it's going to be intense, it's going to be rapid, so you got to keep up with the pace. Mm. So, uh, uh, the work, the one thing that really worked for me is my work rate kind of increased well. Okay. Uh, I could churn out more mm. in a limited amount of time. Mm. And then uh, having that uh, hustle of working eight hours and then doing, say, three to four hours with Stoa, yeah. You're kind of pushing your barriers even. Mm. Uh, so that kind of made me realize that uh, there's li- there's not something as limited bandwidth, but mm. then you need to explore how much you can do mm. and have that balance of, you know, churning out work at a very constant pace. Mm. Uh, mm. So that's something what I'm exploring now because there's a lot I can do at this moment. But then to have that understanding of how to do it and how to do it at the consistent pace is what I want to explore. But then uh, if it wouldn't have been for Stoa, I wouldn't even consider myself doing this amount of work because, uh, you know, after eight hours of work, I just will feel fulfilled for the day and be done with it. So, yeah, that's one thing. Yeah. No, man, that, that, that's that's uh, very interesting, Leslie, right? Like, uh, I mean, that, that's pure hustle sort of right there, right? Kind of pushing yourself. Um, you know, uh, Pala, what about you? Yeah, sure. So how I've approached this is that since currently I'm on a career break, 
so i take it week to week mm. so there are weeks wherein uh, the topics the sprints that we are working upon really intrigue me mm. for example 0 to 1 mm. digital marketing yeah um you know stp these were yeah. the top 3 ones that really stuck with me yeah. you know okay. but i felt that that was something that uh, i was able to utilize and use in my normal course of conversations in my life okay so uh, that really helped me and after stoa happened with me i made a conscious effort to use those uh, learnings that i got over the weekend mm. in the normal work frame that i am doing whether i am doing a research whether i am uh, trying to work with someone on their project so that is how i have tried to include those learnings uh, whenever or however i'm trying to live mm. so that's a big change up that mm. i have done for sure mm. and uh, yeah i think that's currently it's been very util- i have been able to utilize it well till now in effect uh, right there it kind of validates what we are doing also so i'm quite happy to hear that <laughs> um yeah anshan finally uh, how about you So, uh, store started for me uh, with the challenge. I have to put myself out there and interact with the community. I had not done that in a while, and uh, I intentionally had always pushed myself back from that. Like, can't get it, chodo. But it, I did enjoy it after a long while. And uh, yes, like Palash said, that being able to apply those small little things in your everyday life, and even for that matter, I'm so excited that negotiating sprint is gonna help me negotiate with my parents because I suck at it. I absolutely forgot it. I'm going to take all these learnings and I'm going to apply with my parents. And um, one thing that I did on a very personal level that I was able to work on that I tend to be a little perfectionist. So towards the case studies when we have to sit together and we have to work on the cases, everybody has opinions. Everybody is doing this and I'm never satisfied with the work that I've put in. And with all the calls with Palash and Leslin Oh, we fought over things. Okay, boy, why are we arguing this? Why are we uh, putting this uh, as a solution? So we tend to work on that. Okay, I right now this is not a priority. This can't be done. This to this perfection. So let's work on this. So that has been a great learning. That that that's good to know. I think uh, one thing consistently since cohort one that people have learned or have gotten better at, if not anything else, even if not business learning. it just how to deal with different kinds of people especially when working in teams cuz like i like you're working with someone who comes from a different walk of life you're working with someone who's from an other domain entirely and i can imagine right like some especially when you're passionate about say a project or idea it can get heated but then kind of finding the middle ground where you can actually collaborate and make it productive uh, i can imagine those initial days work must have been quite tough right uh, but then i think over time Like you figured out your groove with your team, which I think every team does. So I think that's that's pretty cool to see. Yeah, and I think you know on that note, um, I think we can wrap up here. Anshul Palash, Lesden, thank you so much for spending time with us this evening. Um, you know, if you're out there still watching, thank you for spending time with us and hearing these um, amazing stories as well. And yeah, uh, since it was break week last week, um, you didn't get to do this. Three, two, one, go team. Go team. Awesome, awesome.